a channel name to Debbie Deb. in the world nothing but tranquility and prosperity throughout all of your days i hope you are looking good feeling good doing good sounding good no i'm i'm just i'm i feel really great about life right now okay and then i hope you do too now i changed the channel name back to debbie deb as it was initially for those who do know and skip is just in relation to slim it's like one person in the world who regularly calls me that. The majority of the people I know call me Deb. Nothing more, nothing less. So, I was going back and forth battling on this video, whether I want to do a vlog, whether I want to set the record straight for some of those individuals who feel that's just, I'm just a waiting to, just waiting to fail. And I'm over it. I'm so annoyed with some of these comments. It makes no sense. As I always say, don't let no one steal your joy. Don't let no situation steal your joy. Keep it moving, keep it pushing, keep it going. So, hope you enjoyed me. Pushing and riding around in good old Kansas. Got your girl thinking. Is a $3,000 truck note monthly too much? Is it? Was buying a new truck more worth it than my 2013 Freightliner with a DD15 engine? At 646,000 miles. Yes, I made a huge gamble when I bought this truck knowing that it would need an overhaul, a rebuild, whatever, real soon. I knew the engine would need work on with such a high mileage. And I still made that gamble because I chose for me. In all honesty, my truck note is closer to a car payment and it's literally about, it's almost $400, honestly, a month. Yes, that's it. <laughs> that's all I pay a month. I did not want a new truck because when I was truck searching, I wanted something that I can tweak and maintain in my own personal way. I wanted to be able to fix certain components and ride out like it was brand new. I know what I have to dish out monthly. I know what my debt to income ratio is. So why would I put myself in that financial bind when the equipment is still gonna do the same type of work at the end of the day? It don't make sense. To some individuals who go out there and have literally, or who lease, and have like a $1,500 note every week, or a $3,000 truck note every month, to each his own. Everyone is gonna do what's best for them, or what makes them comfortable. Me, personally, I'm gonna do what's financially feasible for me. Those are some of the common questions. Why would you get a DD-15? Why on earth would you get a Freightliner when Peter Bilt's and Kenworth and blah, 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 is this, then, and third? Like, I don't give a damn, man. Everyone is going to do what they choose to do for some reason. That's just how it is. Why don't you have your own authority? Why did you end up leasing to a company? What? Listen, man, listen, listen, listen. When I make decisions for myself, I try not to jump head first. When I started off as a company driver and decided to purchase a truck after three years, it was skills and knowledge that I was acquiring and gaining throughout those years. I didn't feel too comfortable making any type of business venture moves after six months after one year after the second year because i know financially what type of weight i carry so why go do what the next man or what the next woman is doing 
because it looks good. What looks good to one person may not look good to the next. So don't always follow suit. Do I feel like I rushed my truck in process in purchasing this truck? No, not at all. I had it planned out. Like I strategized what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. And ultimately this truck that I ended up getting, it wasn't my first, it wasn't even my first option. It wasn't. Like I said, I wanted an older truck, something I can tweak in my own personal way and have my own touch to it. I didn't want a truck to exceed 30 grand. I wanted it under 30 grand, you know, cause financially I'm gonna do what's best for me. I am. I can assure you I'm a lot more aware of what I'm getting myself into now with my equipment because I'm out on the road on my own. When it comes to maintenance, the best thing, you have to be able to be financially prepared for any, for any under any circumstance because you just don't know what's gonna happen. So as long as you're financially capable of taking care of your priorities, then things will just be, it'll fall into place for you, it will. Trucking has truly shaped my attitude throughout these couple of years. Starting off as a company driver at Stevens was rough. I am not gonna lie, it was rough. <laughs> the training experience was long, but I learned a lot. Being back and forth through VL was an interesting ride as well. I stayed with them for the amount of time I stayed with them because they paid so well just to be a company driver and I actually enjoyed doing Hasman. I did. Going to TriStar, another um, carrier over the road, it wasn't bad. I didn't stay too long because I wanted the bread every year. The local gig ain't last too long. It didn't. <laughs> Not at all. You're going to know whether you want to be an over the road driver whether you want to do local it was too much strain for me it was all in all i could take my truck and go to any company that i want to i could i could go out there and learn about all the aspects of obtaining your own authority and do just that but i go at my own pace I stay in my own lane. I wear my own kicks and nobody dictates that. That's the best part of this. Your mind. So many people have different opinions on where I went wrong, but yet nobody is dishing anything out financially to assist me. They'll tell you where you went wrong. <laughs> but they ain't going to help you. So, that's my little rant. It is. I plan on paying my truck off by the end of the year. If not, I may go for the middle of next year just because I don't have too many things that I write off. So I know it does help in some type of way. I'm hoping later than sooner, I will end up rebuilding the engine. That way I can just save a little bit more. Nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> but on the real, I do what's best for me. And tend not to focus on those who mention where I went wrong when their own personal situations isn't up to par. Nah, man. Focus on yourself. Hey, 
check. Cause I'm also like, bitch, I'm living too wrecked. This nigga like, people, bitch, give me your neck. I said in my eyes, cause the chest ain't no check. Cause I know my dog, like, I'm she going heck. I come coming straight off the ropes like a wrestler. I'm in the field, I'm a bending like that. I'm feeling like ash on my arms, gotta catch. Remember them days I was trying not to crash. I remember them days I was out on my ass. Now I run it up, gotta go get the bag. I'm in love with the money, I'm way too So, if you made it this far through the video, I appreciate you. As I always try to place great emphasis on do what you love, love what you do, don't allow no one, even somebody who's on the same level as you, don't allow nobody to discourage you. You got to be able to do what's best for you and make it work for you. Your attitude is everything, especially in trucking. I have learned, I have grown and learned that I don't like a middleman out here. I don't. It's time consuming. It's unnecessary. It gets frustrating. Sometimes you gotta be able to do things on your own, man. For real, for real. I appreciate what I do. I value what I do because I set goals for myself. Don't speak on your goals too much, but just do it. Just execute your plan effectively. But consistency is key. Your inconsistencies will and will lead to inadequacies with you not succeeding so that's my little note for this video my little positive note for this video and y'all stay safe until the next <laughs> bye